All right. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Tonight, we're going to talk about laziness. We're going to talk about being lazy. We're going to talk about not putting in the work, being lazy, being procrastinating, not putting in the work. The Bible talks a lot, a lot, a lot about being lazy, being slothful, being not putting in the work. The Bible has a lot to say about that. We're going to look at a few verses. We're going to look at a few verses on that. The first one being Proverbs 12, 24. We're going to start at Proverbs 12, 24. If you want to open up there, first we'll get some music and then we will jump into the message. heads we'll pray and then we'll get into this message here dear lord we just come to you right now lord we want to thank you for allowing us to spread this message lord we thank you for everything that you have provided lord we just ask that you bless this message that you that you let it be your words and your will that, that come across and lord, we just thank you for everything that you have provided us with and it's in jesus name that i pray amen so Again, tonight we're going to be talking about laziness. Talk about what the Bible says about being lazy. And, you know, on top of that, there's there's so many verses that the Bible talks about, about being lazy, not being lazy, putting in the work, going to work. We're going to look at a few of them. There's a lot more. We're going to look at a few of them. First, let's go to Proverbs 12:24. Proverbs 12, 24 it says, The diligent hand will rule, but laziness will lead to forced labor. 
Now, I also want to point out, as we go through some Proverbs, your translation, your wording, depending on which translation that you're using, may be a little bit different. So I'm also going to pull out my Wycliffe Bible, which was the first English translation that was written as well. And Proverbs 12, 24 on that says, the hand of the strong men shall have lordship, but the hand that is slow shall secure troubles. Either which way you look at it, it's talking about being diligent. It's talking about going and doing things. It's talking about going to work, being diligent, not sitting on your hands, putting your hands to work, actually doing something, doing something productive. It's talking about going and doing something and that diligent hand, when you work towards something, when you put in the work towards getting something, you'll be rewarded one way or the other. You're going to be rewarded for hard work in the end. It may not be immediate. It may not be the next day. It may not be the next minute. It may not be the next year. Eventually, you will be rewarded for hard work. It may take a little bit longer, but you will be rewarded for the hard work. But laziness will lead to forced labor, or the one slow of hand will secure nothing but troubles. If you're lazy, if you're sitting on your hands, if you're not going and doing things, the only thing that you're going to secure for yourself is troubles, hardships, hard times. You will secure hard times if you're lazy. You will be in trouble. You will secure trouble if you are lazy. The Bible says, don't be lazy. If we skip down just a couple of verses from that, Proverbs 12, 27. Proverbs 12, 27 says, a lazy man doesn't roast his game, but to a diligent man, his wealth is precious. Now, when we first look at that translation, when we first look at that wording, it's like, you know, we shouldn't put our trust in wealth, right? Well, that's not exactly what it's talking about. Not the way that I take it and not, not whenever we look at some different translations as well. What it's saying is roasting your game, okay? You go, you go out and you hunt down a, 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 an animal. You hunt down and you, and, you, and you kill an animal. You roast it, otherwise it goes bad. The longer you let that sit, because they didn't have freezers back then, if you don't clean the animal, it's going to go bad. The longer you let it sit after you've killed it without cleaning it and letting out all that blood inside of it just rot, the guts, the, the blood, everything else is going to ruin the meat. You also didn't have any other way to preserve it. They didn't have freezers. They didn't have a deep freeze. So you roasted the game. Somebody that is lazy, somebody that's lazy is not going to take the time after they, they're probably not even going to put in the time it takes to go hunt down the game, let alone roast it and clean it and do everything else after they've done that. So they let their possessions, they let that go to waste. Whereas the smart man, the diligent man, the one that's actually going to be doing things, any and everything that he has, he puts value on and he takes care of. He doesn't let anything go to waste. The diligent man is not going to let things go to waste. That, to me, is more of what that proverb is talking about, is not being diligent and not letting things go to waste just because you're lazy. Being diligent and not letting things go to waste because you're just too lazy to take care of it. I'm going to flip over another proverb. The last proverb that we've got is Proverbs 24, verses 30 through 34. Proverbs 24, verses 30 through 34. And this kind of, this kind of sums it up. It says in Proverbs 24, verse 30, starts out and it says, I went by the field of a slacker and by the vineyard of a man lacking sense. The thistles had come up everywhere 
Weeds covered the ground, and the stone wall was ruined. I saw and took it to heart. I looked and received instruction. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the arms to rest, and your prop and your poverty will come like a robber, your need like a bandit. And you sit there and cross your arms and re take a rest. You sleep a little bit longer. You get a little bit more slothful. You get a little. You put it. You don't. You're not putting in the work. You're 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 taking you're taking extra breaks. You're not putting in the work. You, instead of a thirty minute lunch, lunch, you take an hour lunch. Instead of you know, instead of going and doing doing your job. Tr instead of trying to find something to do. Instead of trying to be diligent. You're like eh. I'm just going to go sit down for a while. It's literally saying he walked by a vineyard of a slacker, of a lazy person. He walked by this vineyard in this field of a, of a slacker, of a lazy person. He walked by and he sees that this guy is laying back, kicked back, chilling, half asleep, got his arms crossed, half asleep. There's weeds everywhere. There's thistle over everywhere. The wall's falling down. Everything is falling apart. This guy no longer has a vineyard because he was too lazy to keep up with it. He no longer has a vineyard. The weeds and the thistle have taken over. His walls are falling down. Everything is falling down around him. If you get lazy, if you get you get 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 too lazy and get that sleep and that slumber and that 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 folding of the arms to rest and you're doing that too much. I'm not saying don't rest. God said God rested on the seventh day. I'm not saying don't rest. But I'm saying when you don't when you do that when you're supposed to be working, it's telling you that poverty is going to come like a robber. Poverty is going to come like a robber and your need like a bandit. Everything that you need is going to be stolen too. You're going to need more. Because everything that you had is now gone. You didn't take care of what you had because you were too lazy. Put in the work. Put in the work. You know, I, I just saw right before I went live, live tonight, right before I clicked the live button, I was watching a trailer for a buddy of mine. This guy. He's a 40-year-old veteran. He's a 40-year-old veteran. About to be 41, I think. Anyway, last year, at 40 years old, he put in the work and became a 40-year-old minor league hockey player. Nobody gave him a shot. He was 40 years old. At 40 years old, you should be retiring from playing hockey, not first year of playing semi-pro hockey. He put in the work. He put in the work. And now he's got a streaming TV show that is coming out next year, a full season. Season one has already been shot, I believe. Everything in season one has been shot. He's got that coming out next year. He put in the work. And when you know his story, he was a 40-year-old veteran. He's a 40-year-old veteran here who went from homeless after he got out of the military, he was homeless. He was taking showers with the cows. He put in the work. He put in the time and was diligent and worked up and put in that time. And one of the things that he's told me, and it really kind of sticks out, especially in this sermon, one of the things that he's told me, you got to look at what you want and what you're willing to do to get it. You got to look at what you want and what the work that you're going to have to put in to get that is. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? If it's not something that you really want, you're going to come up with excuses as to why you're not going to do it. You're also going to you're going to have to take risks sometimes. You don't know. You don't know whether or not this is going to pan out or not. And you're scared. You're scared because you're not sure if this is going to pan out the way that you envisioned it or not. 
Is this going to fail? If it fails, what'd you lose? If it fails, what'd you lose? Now, if you don't try, you already lost. And biblically, that's where faith and trusting in him, that he's guiding you on the path to the next step that you should be going on, that's where that comes into play. That's where that comes into play. You got to trust that he's going to put you, you're praying about it. If he if he tells you to go out there and put put this out there, you got to trust and believe that if that's truly what it's meant for you to do, that it's going to work out in some way. But you're going to have to put in the work as well. You're not just going to get, you're not going to get this massive paying job while you're sitting on your butt playing video games. You're going to have to put in the work. You've got to put in the work. You know, you have, if a, if a job that you want says that you got to have a bachelor's degree, guess what? You need to go to school and get your bachelor's degree. If that's what you want, you need to take. What is the next step? What are the steps that you need to take in order to do that? Nehemiah, in the Bible, the story of Nehemiah, he looked at what the steps that he would have to take would be to rebuild the walls. He put a list together and went to the king of what he would need in order to rebuild the walls. He had to put in the work. God helped him. God helped supply him. God helped him out and guided him through it. But Nehemiah had to come up with what are the next steps. God helped him with those steps. God helped him to understand what the next steps were, but he had to do them. God will guide you. God will guide you. And it's like it's like a kid on a, riding, a, riding a bicycle for the first time. As a parent, you know, you take the training wheels off and you're helping them and you're helping them and you're guiding them. And eventually you got to get them to where they know and they can take off on their own. You help guide them, but ultimately they're the ones that's going to have to put their feet on the pedals and pedal that bike. You're helping them, you're holding on, but they're going to have to put their feet on the pedals and pedal. Otherwise, they're going to fall over. And sometimes, when you let go, as a parent, teaching a kid to ride a bike, sometimes when you're, you're teaching them to go and they start pedaling and you start letting go, they're going to fall over. So are we. So are we. When you try something, is it guaranteed to work out? Absolutely not. There's not a guarantee that what you're trying is going to work out. But you're going to gain experience. You're going to gain knowledge. You're going to know Okay, this didn't work. So if I try that again, I need to do this instead of that. The best way that we learn is through experience. And sometimes, honestly, the best way that we learn is through pain. We learn through failure. We learn through not doing it right the first time. But you're not going to know unless you put in the work. Now, also, speaking of putting in the work, speaking of, uh, of putting in the work, and work being a key word, we all know that at times you're going to be working somewhere that you don't really like. It happens to every one of us. At some point, you're going to have a job that you don't really like. Does that mean that you jump ship the first, the first absolute, you know, oh, well, they're, they're, only, pay, they're only paying me Twenty one oh five, and this company over here is going to pay me twenty one ten. They're going to pay me five cents more an hour. I've been with this company for for less than two weeks, and I'm already going to switch over to another company because they're going to give me five cents more. Maybe if you late, lasted at one company longer than two weeks, you could actually get a job making more than that. They look at your resume and see that you're just jumping around between job to job. They know that you're not going to stick around. They know you're not going to stick around. Put in the work somewhere. Put in the work somewhere. And start at the lower end of the table. Instead of thinking that you automatically come into a company and deserve to be at the top. And get told, no, you're back down here. Start, as the Bible says, 
seat yourself at the lower position and then be asked to move up. Don't sit at the front of the table and be told you're back down here at the kids' table. Put in the work. Put in the hard work. You may not like it right now. You may not like it, but who knows what's around the corner. If you get a better opportunity, am I telling you to turn down a job opportunity that's a better job? If it's a better job, that's one thing. But just to chase another five cents? Come on. You've been there two weeks and you're going you're gonna to switch companies for five cents an hour? You're not putting in the work and you're putting your ego above where you where you where you actually are at. Second Thessalonians chapter three verse ten. Second Thessalonians chapter three verse ten. Second Thessalonians chapter three, verse 10, it says, in fact, when we were with you, this is what we commanded you. If anyone isn't willing to work, he should not eat. If a man don't work, he ought not eat. So we have to go to work. We have to go to work. Even if we don't like the job that we've got, we have to go to work and we can't be lazy. We've got to be diligent. Even if we don't like what it is that we're doing, we still have to be diligent. We still have to put in the work. We still have to do what we need to do. We still have to be diligent in doing that. If a man is not willing to work, he should not eat. Bible also, I didn't write it down, but the Bible also talks about if a man doesn't provide for his family, he's worse than a non-believer. So you do have to go to work. You do have to, you do have to go to work. And it says, we talked about three Proverbs earlier where it said that you have to be diligent in what you're doing. But I don't like my job. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you like your job or not. Be diligent and be hardworking in it. Do the best that you can do. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. Last verse, last, last scripture that we've got. Colossians 3, 23. Colossians 3, 23. Whatever you do, do it enthusiastically as something done for the Lord and not for men. Knowing that you will receive the reward of an inheritance from the Lord. From the Lord you serve, the Lord Christ. Whatever you do, do it enthusiastically. Do it diligently, if you will. Do it, do it to the best of your ability. Do it diligently. Don't be lazy about it. Do it enthusiastically. Don't be lazy. Whatever you do, do it for the Lord. Because you know that you will be rewarded from Christ. No matter if your paycheck is small, no matter if you don't think that they're paying you enough, do the best that you can do and rely on your Lord to provide what you need. Your job is to do the best that you can and rely on him to provide you with the rest. Do the best that you can. Your hard work will be noticed in one way or the other, whether it be with that company or with somebody else, another company, your hard work will be noticed. Don't job hop around, but your hard work if you stay if you stay here for a little bit and you put in that hard work they're going to notice it or somebody else is and then you get asked to move up the table instead of thinking you deserve to be at the high end of the table and get told to move back down put in the work take a risk or two Take a risk or two if God is telling you to take that risk. If God is guiding you and telling you to take that risk, then he's guiding you and he's wanting to push you further than what you think you can do. That's a whole nother sermon. That's a whole nother topic is we 
we doubt ourselves a lot instead of trusting him that whenever he's pushing us, he's telling us that we can do more than we think we can. With that, I'm going to end this sermon out. If you'll bow your heads and pray with me, please. Dear God, we just come to you right now, Lord, and we just, we ask that you help guide us. We ask that you help, we ask that you help guide us through the path that you want us to be on. Lord, we thank you that we know that we can rely on you to give us the things that we need. Lord, we thank you for giving us the ability to be diligent. We thank you that, that you give us that ability to be so diligent on things that, 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 that we need to be doing. And Lord, we just ask you, we ask you to guide us on what it is that we should be diligent on so that we're not diligent on something that doesn't matter. We ask you to help guide us so that we can work hard where it matters. On what matters. Not on something useless. Lord, we just ask that you just, again, I'm going to use the word again, Lord. I just ask that you guide us. Guide us, please. And Lord, we ask for a restful night's sleep and a blessed tomorrow. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. With that, I will see you guys Sunday morning, Sunday morning, 11 a.m. Next Wednesday, Wednesday night Bible study. We do that every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Friday night lights, Friday at 8 p.m. Until then, I will see you guys later.